Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look at race number three at Belmont at the Big A on Breeders' Cup Prep Saturday. The grade three way a prep for the Philly and Mare turf. Let's take a look at this field. We're going a mile and three eighths for $200,000. Eight entered. The seven and eight are entered main track only. Mikulik, the number five, is three to five on the morning line. But McCulloch was two to five last time out in the Flower Bowl, and she got wired by Parnak. Yeah, that's why she's up a point for this race, Dan. She couldn't <laughs> get the job done at two to five last time. You maybe you'll do a little bit better uh, in the price department here. Um, how much of an excuse do you want to give her for the Flower Bowl? That's the question, Dan. No pace in front of her. She tried to make up some ground uh, at the end of that race. Couldn't quite do it. Settled for second. And just on the face of it, you watch that race. Parnak went to the lead, just absolutely set glacial fractions and sprinted on home. And you might want to discount that uh, performance all around. Then you look at the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. It's the dreaded gray bar. No speed. Idea Generation might be able to show a little bit of speed for Chad. but And maybe that's why she's in this race, to perhaps help out Mikulik a little bit. But boy, Parnak the three might get a similar situation as last time. The good news for Parnak, listen, Parnak definitely took advantage last time uh, to get the job done. The good news for Parnak is it's okay for her if she doesn't make the lead in this race, Dan. She's not a, that kind of a horse where she has to be in control. Um, but it really does. I, I think you're probably 100% correct that the reason that the one idea generation is in here, a three-year-old for Chad Brown, is because Klarovich and Chad Brown, they saw what happened last time when, when Matula got wired. They're not going to let that happen again. Idea Generation is an outsider in here, despite the grand connection. She's still eligible for a non-winners of two life race. She didn't run particularly well in the Virginia Oaks last time out. She does seem like she's here to ensure some pace. Florent Giroux's job is to go out there and set things up for Mikulik, I would think. I, I would think, too. That's how I looked at it anyway. Um, we'll see if it plays out um, in that direction. We'll see. She so far hasn't run a race that makes her really competitive in here, obviously. She's not a made horse yet, so there could be better to come. I think she's in here to provide some pace. The two is Romagna Mia for Grand Motion Team Valor, and she got wired in a slow-paced race in her North American debut. That was the Beverly D, a race where everybody took back. Fev Rover got to the lead. Fev Rover back down the fractions. Fev Rover sprinted home. Now, Romagna Mia might get a similar situation here unless Idea Generation livens things up early, but she did okay in that North American debut. It's something Grand Motion can build off of. That's how I looked at it, too. I'm not sure how good this horse is, Dan. Um, she did get wired on a slow pace last time. The one-two finishers of that race are both pretty good. I didn't think this really ran particularly well, but maybe she needed the race first time in this country. I just wish I liked her European form a, a little bit more than I do. I mean, she has that win. That last start last year in Italy, she beat a good horse that day, a horse that wound up over here and actually ran some good races. But other than that, I don't really like her form. Let's watch Parnak's win in the Flower Bowl last time out. Everything just worked out beautifully for Parnak. She caught a four-horse field. She caught a race with no pace. She got a great ride from Dylan Davis, and she's able to hold off McCulloch down towards the wire. If you are a Parnak fan, as Mike mentioned early on, this isn't the only race that's good for her. She's shown this year, ever since they've stretched her all the way out in distance, that this is what she wants to do. She can win from off the pace. She can win from on the lead. And she apparently is in career form. Yeah, I think that has to be the takeaway if you want to come back to her uh, in the way of here off of that flower board where she pulled off a little bit of an upset. The takeaway has to be, yeah, she had everything her own way last time, but she was improving into that race. Her, her two starts prior to that were both good performances. And then she took it to another level last time. Maybe she can do that again, Dan. It's not out of the question. Personal best, the number four, might be coming into this race as a bit of a sleeper for Shug McGahey because she has a couple of races on her page, most notably the La Prevoyante, the Orchid down at Gulfstream Park, that would make her a contender in here. She did not run very well against the, one of the divisional leaders, Warlike Goddess and the Bewitch at Keeneland. She went on the layoff, and in her first start back, the matchmaker, fine. I'll give her that race off the layoff at a shorter distance than what she wants. I usually discount everything bad that happens to good horses at Kentucky Downs, but she ran well on that surface before. I expected more from personal best last time. Yeah, I did too. I'm starting to wonder um, how good she actually is now, Dan. It's third off the layoff. Maybe we'll get her best performance now, stretching out the, the, this distance of this race. It does, it's not really an issue for her, so I'm not going to worry about that. She did run a couple of races you know, earlier in the year that I guess would give her some kind of a chance in this race. I'm just not sold on her at this point.
McCulloch won the Jockey Club Oaks at Aqueduct last year, finished second we saw in the Flower Bowl in a race where she was compromised by pace. She's far from a superstar, but she stays all day long. And when you give her pace, you can count on her to run on at the end. Would I take three to five on her in this spot? I'm not sure because she's shown she can be had if the circumstances are not perfect for her. Yeah, that's fair enough. I, I'm not going to agree disagree with that at all. Three to five is tough to take on a horse like her. Um, even if she had the excuse last time, I do think she had a valid excuse in the flower oh, bowl. Yeah. I mean, how good is she really? It was a really nice win for her two starts back when she uh, got to war like God is at the end. I mean, that's a good performance. And I would suggest that if she runs that race, on Saturday, she'll probably win here, but uh, boy, I think you're absolutely right about taking three to five on it. Sister O'Toole has won two consecutive editions of the CTT and TOC, both of those races at Del Mar. Here's the 2023 version. Sister O'Toole comes widest and fastest. 87 buyer speed figure, a bit light compared to some of the horses she's going to be facing on Saturday, but more importantly, she's just going to be facing a much tougher field than the one she ran down here, and she's the kind of mare that needs some pace. Yeah, she'll be more compromised by anyone if that pace projector holds up and they go slow early in this race. The, those two wins that you talked about, Dan, those, those last two stakes wins at Del Mar, they're both at this distance. You don't have to worry about that. Can she get the right trip in here? Movie Moxie, peak popularity. These horses are entered main track only, obviously, become contenders if this Weya is rained off of the turf. Top selection time for the way. And McCulloch is just simply the horse to beat. She's shown uh, that strong finish in her races. It looks like she's got a pace setter for her. Uh, would you single her in multiple race wagers? Probably not. Um, I won't be betting this race straight up regardless that I'm not taking three to five on her, but I'm not betting against her either. I have a feeling Parnak's going to work out a good trip. We're going to find out if she's the kind of horse that needs everything to go her way as it did last time out. But maybe she'll be a playable price one more time. 5364 for Mike, 3452 for me in the way of a prep for the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf.